cloak of invisibility. Ukraine's thermal camouflage is making soldiers vanish from drones. This is a big deal, folks. Welcome to the age of infrared warfare, where the difference between life and death isn't how fast you shoot, but how cold you look. Forget ghillie suits and face paint. Ukraine's infantry is stepping into the future with a new breed of battlefield tech that renders them nearly invisible to thermal imagers and reconnaissance drones. This isn't some DARPA fever dream or Metal Gear cosplay. It's real. It works. And it's being fielded right now by Ukraine's 56th separate motorized infantry Mariupol Brigade. Hey friends, Wes here. Let's dig into why this matters, how it works, and what it means for the Russians trying to play Where's Waldo with a FLIR scope. Modern camouflage isn't about blending in. It's about disappearing entirely. For most of military history, camouflage has been about tricking the human eye. Think tiger stripes in the jungle, desert tan in the Middle East, or pixelated digital camo that looks cool on recruiting posters but doesn't do much in the field. The goal was simple. Don't stand out. But 2025's Battlefield doesn't care about what you look like to the naked eye. It cares about what you look like to a drone circling two clicks overhead with a thermal sensor tuned to detect heat signatures the size of a rabbit. Camouflage today isn't about hiding, it's about erasure. It's about disappearing entirely from the enemy's sensor suite. Thermal imagers like those mounted on Russian Orlan 10 drones or Lancet loitering munitions detect infrared radiation, not light. They don't care if your uniform matches the dirt. They care if your body is radiating at 98.6 degrees while everything else around you is 20 degrees Fahrenheit and snow covered. You might as well wear a blinky neon sign that says, shoot here. This is why modern camouflage has become uh, the science of signature management. You're not just hiding visually anymore, you're hiding thermally, electronically, and spectrally. You're managing every emission your body or equipment might give off. That means minimizing your heat, dampening your radar cross-section, and suppressing your electromagnetic emissions. And doing all of that while still being mobile, agile, and combat ready. The anti-thermal suits Ukraine is fielding are part of that new playbook. They use multi-layered materials that reflect ambient thermal energy rather than emit body heat. The result is that your thermal signature doesn't glow against a cold background. It blends like fog in fog. The suits function much like a thermal mirror, reflecting what's around them and creating a false baseline that tricks thermal sensors into seeing nothing. But here's the kicker. These aren't bulky blankets or static netting you hunker down under. These are lightweight, wearable suits designed for movement, built for recon patrols, assault teams, and medevac units who have to be quick and quiet. Soldiers can walk, they can crawl, they can climb, or even fight while wearing these things. They're not hiding behind tech, they're fighting inside of it. And that's the real paradigm shift. This isn't about invisibility as a gimmick, it's about survivability as a doctrine. It's the recognition that on a battlefield blanketed by drones and remote sensors, being seen is synonymous with being targeted. And being targeted, well, we all know how that ends. So while Russia invests in more drones, more sensors, and more thermals, Ukraine is investing in countermeasures that don't just reduce the risk of detection, they break the detection model entirely. They're not playing by the old rules anymore. They're writing new ones. And it's here where we talk about the 56th Brigade that goes full predator mode. Go! This is a chopper! On March 19th, the 56th Brigade dropped a video that should send chills down the spines of Russian drone operators. The footage shows Ukrainian troops suited up in anti-thermal camouflage moving virtually unseen across terrain while being filmed with thermal sensors. This isn't science fiction, this is modern warfare. These suits are already operational, not just lab tested. Recon units, sniper teams, assault groups, and even medevac teams are deploying with them right now. It's a direct answer to Russia's overwhelming reliance on drone surveillance and kamikaze FPVs, and it's forcing a recalibration of Russian targeting doctrine. 
If your drone can't see the enemy, it can't hit the enemy. Alexander, the founder of the Razvidka project, put it best, saying, quote, our suits reflect the thermal signature of the surrounding environment and function like chameleons, end quote. Bonus, they're particularly effective in cold weather. When thermal contrast is at its worst, or best, depending on which side you're on. Okay, let's cut through the hype. Thermal stealth isn't just some neat gadget for gearheads and recon. It's not just cool tech for tech's sake. This is a full-blown tactical and operational shift, one that changes how Ukraine fights, how Russia reacts, and how the battles unfold on the ground. Why? Well, because when you can't be seen, you control the tempo. Let's start with the basics. In modern combat, especially on the Eastern Front, surveillance dominates everything. Drones are in the sky 24-7, FPVs scout for targets, loitering munitions hover like vultures, and lurking in the background are Russian artillery batteries waiting for coordinates. This is a battlefield where movement equals exposure and exposure equals death. In that context, thermal camouflage isn't a luxury, it's the difference between being the hunter or the hunted. Imagine you're leading a reconnaissance team tasked with getting eyes on a Russian position. In the past, your options were pretty limited. Move under cover of darkness, avoid open terrain, cross your fingers the drone overhead is low on battery. Now, with anti-thermal suits, you can cross that field. You can get within 50 meters of the enemy and they won't see you on infrared. You can report back, call fire, adjust, and maybe even walk back out. That's what thermal stealth buys you, initiative. It lets Ukrainian forces get inside the enemy's decision-making loop. It lets them act without being seen or without being found by enemy sensors, which is the first step in Russia's kill chain. And if that chain doesn't start, nothing follows. No fire mission, no drone strike, no 152 millimeter shell inbound to your last known location. Now let's talk snipers. A good sniper team is already hard to find. Add thermal camouflage and they become borderline mythical. Now they can set up on a ridgeline, overwatch roads, or cover a friendly assault without being spotted by UAV circling overhead. And they can relocate after a shot without leaving behind a glowing thermal trail. That's not just a tactical edge, that's psychological warfare. Evacuation teams too. These guys are some of the most exposed personnel on the battlefield. Pulling wounded under fire is dangerous enough without a drone broadcasting your every move to artillery crews miles away. Thermal camo gives medics precious seconds, sometimes minutes, to extract without detection. It means lives saved, not just from bullets, but from being tracked and targeted during rescue. And here's something commanders will appreciate thermal stealth turns terrain back into an asset. Lately, open fields have become death traps. Crossing them without being targeted by drone-guided artillery has been a gamble. But with these suits, soldiers once again maneuver across what was previously no man's land. Movement becomes possible, flanking becomes viable, surprise becomes realistic. In other words, thermal camouflage isn't just about not dying, it's about reshaping how operations are planned and executed. It allows for new tactics, greater mobility, more aggressive action, and the ability to seize and hold the initiative. And let's not ignore the morale boost. Soldiers knowing they can move with the reduced risk of being instantly lit up by a drone, well, that's huge. Confidence changes how units operate. It encourages bolder missions. It reduces hesitation and it builds trust in your gear, in your team, in your chances of surviving the day. This isn't tech for tech's sake, it's tech that changes doctrine. Tech that lets infantry do what infantry were meant to do, close with and destroy the enemy, not cower under camouflage nets, hoping they don't get spotted. That's why this is such a big deal. The Russians aren't ready for this. Let's be blunt, the Russian military is a lot of things, brutal, reckless, and stubbornly committed to 1980s tactics, but adaptive? Not so much. Moscow built its doctrine on mass. Mass artillery, mass drones, mass infantry. It's a strategy that banks on outlasting, not outsmarting. But here's the problem. Thermal stealth breaks their entire surveillance-driven kill chain. 
It's like trying to play chess with an opponent who's invisible half the time and still somehow taking your pieces. Russia's vaunted drone fleet, Orlan 10s, Lancets, Zala reconnaissance birds, even commercial DJI drones repurposed into kamikaze bots has become the backbone of their battlefield awareness. These drones serve as forward observers, target designators, and executioners. Thermal cameras mounted on these platforms give Russian commanders a God's eye view of the battlefield, allowing them to spot, fix, and finish Ukrainian targets in real time. But that only works if the targets show up. Now that Ukrainian infantry is starting to deploy anti-thermal suits at scale, Russia is experiencing a form of digital blindness. Their drones scan an area and see, well, nothing. Their gunners get coordinates for a Ukrainian sniper team that was supposed to be there and find empty trenches. Their FPVs loiter over a potential assault corridor and spot no movement, no heat plumes, no life. Is it a lull in enemy activity? Or is there a six-man recon team crawling through the woods under your nose? Spoiler, it's probably the latter. The psychological toll this creates can't be overstated. When your ISR tools, your most valuable battlefield assets, start feeding you garbage data, trust erodes, not just in the tech, but in the commanders relying on that intel. Fire missions get second-guessed, movements get delayed, ammo gets wasted, paranoia sets in, and in an army already plagued by command and control dysfunction and mistrust between frontline troops and their higher-ups, this is like pouring JP-8 jet fuel on a bonfire. Then there's a logistics angle. Russia burns through thousands of drones every month, many lost to jamming, small arms fire, or the occasional eagle with a grudge. But if their thermal payloads are no longer effective against Ukrainian positions, those losses become even harder to justify. You're spending $50,000 on a reconnaissance drone that can't see its primary target. That's like buying night vision goggles for a blindfolded knife fight. And don't expect a Russian response to be particularly elegant. They're already running out of Iranian drones, their FPV fleets rely on fragile supply chains, and their high-end optics are increasingly bottlenecked by sanctions. Thermal camouflage isn't just defeating their drones, it's exposing the limits of Russia's defense industry. It's also worth noting that while Ukraine is innovating on the battlefield, field testing gear, adapting in real time, well, Russia is trying to win a 21st century war with Cold War toys duct taped together. Sure, they've got numbers, but Ukraine has something far more dangerous, an edge. This isn't some theoretical advantage either. This is happening right now in trench lines around Avdika in forest belts outside of Bakhmut in assault operations near Crimea. Ukrainian soldiers are vanishing from Russian sensors and reappearing where they're least expected. Russia wasn't ready for HIMARS. They weren't ready for naval drones. They weren't ready for storm shadow strikes on Sevastopol. And they sure as hell weren't ready for squads of thermally invisible ghost soldiers sneaking through their forward lines under cover of cold air and moonlight. By the time Russian units realize something's changed, it's already too late. This isn't the end, though. This is the beginning. According to the 56th Brigade, these suits are just the start. Imagine scaling this technology across entire brigades. Imagine applying it to crew served weapons, field headquarters, or even logistics convoys. Hell, pair this with decoys that do have heat signatures, and you've just flipped the game board and sent the pieces flying. And if the West is paying attention, and I hope they are, they'll realize this is exactly the type of low-cost, scalable tech that turns the tide. Forget expensive next-gen fighters like the recently unveiled F-47. Give every Ukrainian soldier the power to vanish in plain sight, and you've rebalanced the battlefield overnight. So yeah, Russia might have more shells and more meat for the grinder, but Ukraine? Well, Ukraine has invisibility cloaks. Real ones. And they're putting them to good use. That's it for today, friends. Subscribing is the single best way to support this channel because it keeps me motivated to keep making content like this. By the way, we went from 200 subscribers in September to 52,000 subscribers now in, what is that, uh, six months? That amazes me. And it's because of you. 
So if you ever need a middle-aged global war on terror veteran to come to your aid, call me. I got your back. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.